Praise the Lord. Praise yeah. the Lord. Tonight we're going to talk about being and being a child of God. Okay? So that is what we are talking about. Now, I had that list. God, God gave me the list. And so that's on the other side of the board. And all these words are here that we have, like the word um, belonging, aff affirmation, and affection. And so God started to give these words to me. And some I had learned from some ministries. I had learned things. But especially the word being, God just kept speaking to me. Being, being, being. And I thought, um, where is this about? And so, even now, I'm still learning about it. <clears throat> I'm still learning about it. Yeah. And um, being is very important. You are a human being. Amen? Yeah. Everybody say, I am a human being. I am a human being. Now God, He is a spirit. And because God is a spirit, He is also the ultimate being. And out of Him, it says that in Christ we have our being. And I'm going to read the scripture to you about that. That is in Acts 12, Acts 17, verse 28. For in Him we live and move and have our being. Everybody say, have our being. Have our being. So I'm going to read it again so, it's, so that you see this is in the scripture. For in Him we live and move and have our being. As servant also of your own poet have said, for we are are also his offspring. 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 So God put it in me and I said, Nicholas, this is very important. And for us here, living in the Western world, being is very important. Why? Because God is spirit. Everybody say, God is spirit. God is spirit. And we are called to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. truth. So we are not called to worship the Father mentally. We are called to worship the Father in spirit. Why is that? Because we are a spirit. You are a spirit. Okay? You are a spirit. And much in the Christianity, especially in the West, people focus on being a mental Christian. But we are called what? To be a spiritual Christian. Because the Bible says that you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? We are to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We are to learn to walk in the Spirit. We are called to pray in the Spirit. Live in the Spirit. Why? Because in Him we live and move and have our being. Okay? It says that when God made Adam, he blew in him the life. And I'm going to read to you a scripture from Psalm 139. And it says this, Psalm 139. 
where shall I go from thy spirit? And because it, this Bible has many Jewish words, it says, where shall I go from thy ruach? Or where shall I flee from thy presence? So ruach is spirit, it is life, and it is bread. And when, when God breathed in Adam, Adam became a living soul, it says. Why? Because God's spirit blew spirit into Adam. And Adam became a human being. Yeah? yeah? Adam became a human being. Why? Because the Ruach of God was blown in Adam. Amen. Adam became a living soul because his spirit was alive. And it said they had fellowship with God. Amen. Every night. Wow. Every night. Why? Because Adam was a spirit being, living in a soul, having a body. Now we, by Christ, have come alive in our spirit. We were dead because of our sin, but we are now born again. As our spirit has been born again in the kingdom of God, through the blood of the second Adam, Jesus Christ. And so our spirit has come alive. And that is why you are a human being. So this word is very important. The word being. I didn't understand it, but I went to look in the scriptures to understand it. And God has been teaching me about this and this is very important so you say why is this important well you will see the connection right now you are a human being but if you see the secular world they don't really agree with that they will say you are a human why because they believe in evolution. Yeah? And what I say, evolution brings confusion. Mm. So this middle word is confusion. So we are a spirit being, we are a human being, because we have a spirit. But as we saw with fatherlessness, you get confused. But and we saw last time also on that list that above that was abuse. So abuse is one of the ways to become what? Confused. Mm -hmm. Many abused people become confused people. But also the education system is abusing the people by lowering them to what? Mm -hmm. To a monkey! Yeah. Monkey. To a monkey. monkey. Yeah, because, because they want you to believe in evolution. And, and so because of that they say everything is evolved. So we are involved from what? From a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> and so therefore the world says you are a human. But we say no, you are a human being. Because see, if you are just involved from a monkey, it shows that you are the same as an animal. And that is what evolution teaches us. That is what many schools are teaching. This is why evolution is so bad, because it takes you away from what? Being a human being. Because you have a spirit. A monkey does not have a spirit. A monkey does not need to be born again. But a human being needs to be born, born again. again. So evolution brings confusion. And now I even go further. Evolution brings sexual confusion or gender confusion. Why is that? Why is that? Because the Bible says... 
God made Adam and Eve. He made male and female. This is Genesis 1. Yeah. Verse 27. It says he made them male and female. So what did God say? Two. Two genders. Male and female. That is two. Yeah? yeah. Two. You see? Two. Mm. And God said let the two become one. Mm. That is in marriage. They become one. Why? Because God is one. Mm. So everything goes back to who God is. And so this is important to understand. So today, the trouble that we have in many schools and in the education world is what? Gender confusion. But if you teach the Bible, then you know you're not a monkey. You don't come from, from monkey land. No. You are created in the image of God. Amen. And therefore there is no gender confusion in the Bible. There is male and female. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. And this is how it is. And the young generation is getting confused because they're listening to all these different views. But I'm telling you, just go and read the Bible. And you will understand what Nicholas is talking about. And this is... And this is so very important to understand the being because God is raising up a bride. Amen. The bride of Christ who is going to look like Christ. Amen. But it starts in the spirit. Amen. 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 It starts in the spirit. spirit. You are born of the spirit. And this is what is important. Amen. And so... When you take evolution, you take Romans 1, and you see the gender confusion where? In Romans 1. But the good news is that even in the great confusion, in the days of Apostle Paul, in Romans 1, we have Romans 2, and it said 2, and it says that the, it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Mm. So even in those days of Apostle Paul, there was still hope. Mm. Even... In Apostle Paul, his days, there was all this gender confusion. Mm -hmm. But once God moved into Rome and God brought men to Christ, Amen. they went to persecution and hardship, but breakthrough came. Amen. And so stand firm today in your fight, move forward, stand strong in what I'm saying because it's scripture. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And this is why this is so important. Mm -hmm. That you learn to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Amen? Yes, so God is a spirit and He wants us to worship Him in spirit and truth. Because you are born of the spirit. And so, we have, like what we have here, you are a child of God. This breaks the confusion by knowing who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. As we said earlier, in Him we live and move and have our being. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, this learning to understand the Scriptures is very important. So I go to Ephesians 1. And Ephesians 1, it shows like 10 times who you are in Christ, or who Christ is in you. And this is what it says. Verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Mm. You hear that? So you are blessed... With every spiritual blessing in Christ. It is in Christ that you are blessed. And in Christ, how did you get there? By being born of the Spirit. Because you are a spirit being. Because God is spirit. 
Amen? Amen. You see that? So how do we get in Christ? By being born of the Spirit. Because God is a spirit being. And you are a being. Because God is spirit. And those who come to God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. And so it says in Ephesians 1 verse 7, in whom, so that's in Christ, we have the redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin, sin according to the riches of His grace. grace. You see, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are redeemed and we become born again, which is part of the redemption. And therefore, our spirit is new, made new, because we are a spirit being made in the image of God. You understand this? This is why this is very important. And this is why you should not believe in evolution theory. Evolution theory is deception. It's made by Satan. Why? To deceive you. To deceive the children in school. And what I've learned from Kent Hoving, that he said, well, before communism comes in a nation, they first sent evolution. Mm. Evolution is the forerunner, a frontrunner of communism, mm. of socialism. Mm. So what have they done with the West? They first brought in evolution. And now you see the next steps of socialism. This is all happening right now. And this is why we need revival. We need a, a, awakening. We need transformation and reformation. It's very important. And so we have to rise up. And we say no to the nonsense of evolution that brings confusion. You see? And so today... Now we have gender confusion. Why? Because they're walking away from the Bible. Countries who, who were founded as Christian nations, they're walking away from their foundation. Mm. Amen. But we have to be like John the Baptist and say, repent! Yeah. Repent and come back to the Lord! Repent! Because Jesus is coming soon! And he is not just going to come in a nice way the second time. He's going to come as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And, his, and his, his robes will be full of blood. We can read it in Isaiah 62. That who is that who is coming from Basra? His robe is red. Why? Because of his making war. With his enemies when he comes back. So it's important for us now. To become part of the bride of Christ. And learn who you are in Christ. And so the book of Ephesians shows. The blessings that are there. It says that. Oh, you are blessed with all the spiritual blessings. In the heavenly places in Christ. So God wants you now to activate. That you pray for for your grace to be multiplied so that you can start to press into these heavenly blessings. So that you learn to move with visions and dreams. Seeing the heavenly realm and learning how to move with the glory and the power of God for the last days. Amen. Amen. So we could do a great teaching on who you are in Christ and those great things. But I want to go to the next step. So that is this, that, that um, who God's being is. And this is what we see in Exodus 34 verse 7. That it says, the Lord God, gracious, kind, full of mercy, full of goodness and truth. Exodus 34 verse 7 is important. Why? Because you need to know who your heavenly father is. A child knows who his father is. 
who his mother is. And that is where the child gets its identity from. And so the next time we're talking about sonship and to get true identity. Yes? yes. True yes. identity. But it starts with being a baby. And so I'm going to read to you from Peter. One Peter two verse two. One Peter as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So I read also to you again from Exodus 34, verse 6. And the Lord passed by him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord merciful, gracious, long suffering, and abundant in goodness and in truth. Amen. So we as babes, as newborn babes, when, when a child is being born again, you learn to drink from what? the love of God, the mercy of God. Why? Because He is your Father. And so you as a child have received the image of your Heavenly Father. And the Heavenly Father wants to impart His love in your heart. And that is why we love the move of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit makes known the love of the Father to us. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so, so, being in Christ is very important. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But, we need also to experience who our Heavenly Father is. And that is why it says, as new babes, the sire, the sincere milk. So you have to learn to drink. Not only think, but drink from the river of life Amen. the river of life is also the river of pure love the river of pure milk milk of the presence of the father we also call him the father of glory the father of glory wants to reveal his glory to you and fill you with his goodness his mercy his kindness because he said to Moses I'm going to show you my glory and his glory is his abundance of goodness his abundance of mercy his abundance of kindness and he wants to heal you in that love because remember above the confusion was the abuse and many people have been abused in this world and have come to Christ and now Christ wants what? To heal you of the abuse by drinking as a babe from the Father's love. From the river of heaven. From the river of the Spirit of God through Christ. As the Holy Spirit is poured out in your life. And that is why I really believe in the moves of the Holy Spirit. Whereby you're overwhelmed with the glory of God. With the love. With the kindness with the mercy of God so you are overwhelmed and being set free from what from confusion Amen. from abuse from the hurt and the pain of the abuse and that is why we have to learn to drink from the Holy Spirit because you are what a spirit being and as a spirit being, you have to get into the realm of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And the end of army is going to be an army who have learned to live in the spirit, walk 
walking in the spirit praying in the spirit and warring in the spirit and worshiping in the spirit and that is for you amen, amen. but god wants to heal your heart by giving you revelation of the Father of glory, how much the Father of glory loves you. Mm -hmm. But that's not just about your mind, it's about your spirit, and from your spirit that it flows to your soul. And then you are being renewed by the spirit of your mind. And it's not just your mind, it's the spirit. It's the Holy Spirit through your spirit changing your mindset. Yeah? yeah, and it's not just by you saying things with your mind. No, God is spirit and it's within your spirit that is one with the word of mm -hmm. God. Yeah, the word of God shows you these things, teaches you these things, but the Holy Spirit reveals these things. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And Jesus comes to you to bring freedom for now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty see the Lord comes to you in the spirit to do what bring liberty Amen. you see this is deeper what I'm saying and this is the levels where we're talking about the seven spirits of God. She did it. I just stepped into the deeper realm. See, because because now the Lord is that spirit. You see that? So the Lord and the spirit are one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now the Lord is that spirit. And that is why I say you are a spirit being. And now the Lord, who is Jesus Christ, is that spirit. Mm -hmm. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You see, this is why we have the teaching on the seven spirits to bring a deeper revelation and God wants to pour out these rivers in your life. The fullness is seven and burn with the flames of the fullness in you that you are burning, that you are on fire. <laughs> the, the, bird, the bride is going to be bright, shining, the glory in the earth. And so we have to press in. Amen? Amen. And everything comes to us to the cross. And Jesus wants to purify us at the cross daily. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I do now daily Holy Communion. And I cry now more and more. Why? Because the Lord is purifying me from the inside out. And he wants to do that for you. Amen. 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 Let's stand Amen. and uh, receive that love and the glory. Yeah. This, yeah. We open our hearts, Lord, right now for your glorious love. Your glorious love right now. Burning us, Lord. Burning us with the glorious love, Lord. And touch the nations, Lord. Touch the nations, Lord. Touch the nations. That's the pastors, that's the believers, wherever they are, Lord. Let your glory go and set them free. They be growing as a bride of Christ, Lord. We loosen this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.